One thing that I really hated about China was there are endless amounts of stairs. But the thing about it is, when you climb all of these structures and scale all the stairs, it's what you get at the end of that journey that makes everything so rewarding. And so the black man is in China. Yes, the legend is here. And it's my first full day, so I really want to take the time to kind of explore the sites around me and kind of soak in the culture of the city these next couple of days. I am in Beijing. This is my first time in an Asian country. Yesterday was not so eventful because we were trying to find our way to the hostel and we had the lost bag. So we were basically kind of looking for clothes for her to buy. So it's all been kind of a mess, kind of a bumpy start. Not the best, but we're hoping today and tomorrow be a little better. It's a pretty nice environment, man. I, I like how everything is, it's really calm. It's like hustly bustly, but it's calm at the same time, if that makes sense. I'm waiting for Sarah to wake up, so I thought I would take advantage, because I was up at like 4 a.m. Thought I would take advantage of me being up early and get my little inspiration in, my little soak in the sights somewhat, because then once I get back home, I'm going to try and make something musically inspired by the things that I see out here, so. We'll see how it turns out. But until then, let's explore Beijing. So we were staying down this little alley in a hostel called the Leo Hostel. A lot of people trying to sell you stuff, you know, as usual. Black taxis trying to scam you into going to the Great Wall for 600 bucks. <laughs> but it was a nice place, it was a nice spot. I'm ready to get out though. But it should be noted that it is extremely windy out here. I had no idea China was this windy and this cold. Man, this is like colder than freaking Ukraine. That's how these things usually go. You have expectations and then everything just kind of changes to how you thought it was supposed to be. Cause we're going now tonight in a foreign land tonight. It's Romanian girls tonight. So many here that I like. Cause I'm a European. Kind of exploring this Temple of the Sun Park, one thing that I noticed is China is very family driven, community driven. You know, people spending time with each other, and that's something I liked. We're in this Temple of the Sun Park that we found after Sarah did her bargaining attempt, which, eh, she did kind of good. <laughs> no. <laughs> she paid like. She didn't try. I mean, they started at like 600, which is like 81 euros. She's like, no. Well, I put six, like 60. And then she and came like, to 100. Ah, last price, 100. Okay. The famous words, last price. Yeah. Last price, last price. What are they doing, dancing? There was an older lady dancing earlier. I caught her, now there's these people dancing. This is like, it reminds me of Central Park, kind of. Like an Asian Central Park. Uh-oh, uh-oh. He's getting it in. Chinese people love to dance in public. Everywhere you go, you will find some couple, some group, people dancing, enjoying life, you know, not even caring about what's happening around them. I never was this kind of man to do it all without a plan. But now I'm feeling partisan to a stranger's body in my hands. I thought LA traffic was bad. Look at this. And it's been like this for freaking 10 minutes. Good lord. Welcome to the Forbidden City. Or at least the outskirts of it because we went on a day that it was closed. <laughs> Uh, but at least we had, you know, some good sights still.
Everybody keeps asking Sarah for photos. We don't know why. This is the second time it's happened. The first time was yesterday. And it's always like these middle-aged Chinese men. They're asking me to take a picture of her and him together. But never, we always think it's like, oh, take a picture of you with it's whatever. Yourself. With yourself. But no. It's like, oh, what? So there's got to be something going on, man. But apparently it's the 70th anniversary of China, which is pretty cool. We've been walking all day, and finally, a decent view. Actually, a better view of the city than in the Forbidden City itself. So the plan today is to see the Temple of Heaven. Another park where a lot of people are out dancing and it's really an amazing sight to see, as simple as it is. Every park we go to, they're, they're dancing. They love to dance here. And that's something I'd never expect, and in public, which is something I really like. I think more people should be like that. I've noticed there is such an appreciation for their culture here through art of any form, whether it's music or dance, architecture or design. They just have a deep appreciation for their roots. This is something that I think a lot of people mistake about China. They think it's like this big scary country that's trying to take over the world and really if you go there you see how welcoming the people are and how rich the culture is. Okay. Over here is getting off, man. She sounds like <laughs> I don't know, but she's getting off. I don't know how she's keeping up with the music, but she's like every note the music hits, she's hitting it too. So dope though. That's huge. And from what I remember, it was like built as a place to worship earth and heaven. Because usually you see temples built to like worship gods and things, but this was like to worship actual places. And then it has four pillars built inside to symbolize the four seasons, the 12 months of the year, different things like that. So very, uh, very amazing. is the only part that sucks about all these places to see so many stairs but then you get views like this
I thought I was falling off. <laughs> One thing that I really hated about China was everywhere you go, there are endless amounts of stairs. But the thing about it is, when you climb all of these great structures and scale all the stairs, it's what you get at the end of that journey that makes everything so rewarding. China taught me a lot about patience and a lot about enjoying the journey that you're on. Because if you focus so much on the end goal, you miss up so many beautiful things along the way. So many important lessons along the way. A lot of people just want the end goal. They want the end result, but they don't want to go through what it takes to get there. But there's no way to get there unless you go through the necessary steps to reach that level. If you want to see the tallest mountain in the world, you have to hike it. If you want to experience a glass bridge and see a beautiful canyon beneath you, you have to walk across that bridge. You have to face your fears. You have to push yourself beyond even your own expectations. It's only the people who are persistent and push who will see these things in life, who will reach those goals in life. So as musicians, I ask you, for your dreams, and your goals, what are you willing to go through to reach them? And are you prepared to do whatever it takes to see the beauty in the end? Easily one of the most serene places I've ever been. But the sunset here is indescribable. <laughs>